Contrary to what uh, many fundamentalist religionists have to say, God did not punish Haiti with this big earthquake. If you think God is the cause of any evil, you need to study what Jesus and his apostles said. So who is it that says that God causes evil? Well, ancient and primitive religions who worship deities uh, have very often had evil deities or deities that are vengeful and so on. We have even in Hebrew religion uh, Deuteronomic and, and previous to Deuteronomic uh, theology, the idea of God as a vengeful God who uh, uh, was a God of war that sat upon a war throne and so on. Uh, but the God that we understand as God today with a capital G and we better describe perhaps as Godhead, the Abba or the father mother of the master Jesus and the root and source of all being is not a deity and is not definitely an evil deity. And of course the insurance companies say that God causes evil because they refer to all natural disasters as acts of God. But what did Jesus, what did Yeshua really teach? Well, we can take a look at what he had to say about natural disasters when he talks about the tower at Siloam that fell down all of a sudden and killed a bunch of people. He said, do you suppose that those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse sinners than all those who live in Jerusalem? So, what do you suppose caused this thing? Shoddy construction, human responsibility. Why do much stronger California earthquakes cause so much less damage and death than we see in Haiti? Good planning, regulation, resources for proper construction, money. How many are going to be killed in future earthquakes and floodplains and tsunamis because of poor planning and lack of resources in poor nations? Human responsibility is what we have to take for ourselves and for others. And many people do not have the resources to do it for themselves. And they end up paying the horrible price for this. So Yeshua asked, do you suppose they were worse sinners than all who lived in Jerusalem? He answers his rhetorical question, no. And then he makes this point. But I warn you that uh, again, that unless you submit to the way of God in your heart, you too will perish. Now, the word I translate as submit in Aramaic is naham. It means to submit or become obedient to. It does not mean to repent as you find it in the Greek New Testament. What does it mean to obey the way of God? Well, the malkuth or sovereignty, not kingdom, of God is summarized in the names of God. Justice, compassion, beauty, truth. There are over a thousand different names of God you'll find in the Old Testament. Yeshua tells us to be faithful to those values. Justice, compassion, beauty, truth. Today that means science, that's truth. Geology and uh, construction sciences and archaeology are uh, helpful and uh, uh, architecture and so on, and compassion, social aid for the poor and the needy, stewardship for humanity and the earth. Now James, the brother of Jesus, tells us in the epistle attributed to his tradition that God does not cause evil. Let no one say when disaster strikes, I am being tested by God, for God cannot be tested with evil, and he himself brings evil upon no one. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father, Mother of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of change. <coughs> now, like Yeshua James, or Jacob, doesn't use the term God. Yeshua never used the term God, except when he is stated to have quoted the 22nd Psalm on the cross and said, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, and so on. But Yeshua used the mystical term Abba, a very interesting term because it's a feminine form of a masculine word. The Hebrew Aramaic word for father was Ab, but Yeshua's Abba is a word that has puzzled scholars and uh, it's uh, translated usually as father. 
but it's father plus a feminine ending in, he in Hebrew and Aramaic. And some scholars have speculated that Abba means something like Italian Papa, a child's name for a father. But that's not really correct, because Abba was a Jewish mystic name for a godhead that is both father and mother, as you find in the Odes of Solomon and other psalms contemporary with Yeshua, probably that were sung by Yeshua and his disciples. And in Yeshua's devotion to the feminine, Ruach HaKodesh, or Holy Spirit of Godhead, which was later made masculine in the Christian churches. So it's the lack of justice and compassion and truth in human thought and action that lead to trial and suffering and eventual spiritual death. It's not because God uh, punishes people and puts evil down on them. The devil doesn't make you do it. God doesn't punish you or anyone with evil trials and disasters. We have the ultimate responsibility for what we choose to do or neglect to do, and these actions and inactions have inexorable consequences, as James points out. Well, if the disaster in Haiti was not caused by God, then who or what is responsible? Well, scientists have warned for decades of the impending uh, earthquake, which will cause terrible disaster in Haiti, just as they also did for New Orleans, warning of the disaster that a large hurricane would bring, and of course Katrina brought that, and nothing was done. In the year 2009, Haiti was ranked as the most corrupt country in the world by Transparency International, and its slums and government corruption are what? They're human-caused disasters already. So who's to blame for the disaster in Haiti? Human neglect, not an angry deity specifically the Haitian economic and governing elite. In the year 2009, uh, in the publication of the European think tank, FRIDE, uh, Nancy Rock uh, wrote about Haiti in an article called Haiti, the Sour Grapes of Corruption. She refers to, quote, the lack of willingness shown by the Haitian political and economic elites to eradicate this scourge, meaning poverty and corruption and so on. <clears throat> the impunity of those involved in corruption added to the lack of transparency is a disincentive to foreign investors and a significant obstacle to the development of the Haitian people. The government, terrible government, not just ineffective but corrupt. So now who must assume responsibility for the proper rebuilding of Port-au-Prince and all the infrastructure and the installation of a new democratic government in Haiti, we and the world are responsible. Because there isn't anything in Haiti. Is this nation building? Yes. Is it in the U.S. interest? Yes. Is it God bringing good out of evil through people of goodwill? Yes. God didn't cause the Haitian disaster, but God will act through good people to bring good out of it.